Hello and welcome to another TLDR EU video. The European Union has had to deal with a number of crises in the past years, from the 2008 financial crisis all the way through to the current pandemic. However, no crisis has done more to shake the unity of the EU than the migrant crisis. The number of people entering the bloc through myriad different corridors and routes has caused serious rifts within the Union. Despite efforts by the EU as a whole and by individual members, it remains a major problem, one overlooked due to the pandemic. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what's being done to tackle it, what 2021 could hold for Europe, and most crucially, the routes that migrants could take and the countries they'll end up heading through and to. If you're interested in European issues like this, then make sure you subscribe to the TLDR EU channel for all of our latest content on the Union and the continent as a whole. If you want to widen your lens though, then you can also check out the TLDR Global channel. Over there we're covering a whole bunch of international issues, like Ethiopia's ongoing civil war, China's disappearing billionaire, and how the hell global debt works. The channel's linked down below. It's worth first and foremost looking at the routes into the EU one by one, because there are a number of different key routes taken by migrants. It is worth saying though that these people are attempting a difficult journey. No one actively wants to risk their lives. No one wants to walk miles upon miles without access to food or water. People ultimately undertake these journeys without promise of ever getting safety because it's their only option. People are fleeing war-torn countries. Countries ravaged by civil war and the coronavirus are in serious economic and political turmoil. For them, Europe is a continent of safety, a continent of prosperity, a continent when they can finally stop worrying about whether they'll have a bomb dropped on their head by their own government, or end up starving due to a lack of one. There are four primary routes we're going to explore in this video, taking a look at not only the journey, but how these routes have impacted the European response to this crisis. The Balkan route is one of the more complex and fraught routes. Starting in Turkey, most migrants are not only looking to reach the European Union, but specifically the likes of Austria and Italy. With them starting in Turkey, migrants will first and foremost attempt to reach the EU nations of Bulgaria or Greece, from which migrants will often journey through North Macedonia, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia and Slovenia. The last bit of the journey though is the hardest, because Croatia's border with Hungary and Slovenia is highly secured, and even to get to this point, it's necessary to cross entire mountain ranges. So there's also the Greek route, one of the best known routes that migrants attempt to use to access the holy grail that is European land. The Greek route is one of the shortest available, from a Turkish town to the island of Lesbos. The issue being how to get there. Unlike the Balkan route, terra firma doesn't cover the entire path. In fact, the route involves a potentially deadly sea crossing in boats, if we can even call them that. They're woefully underpowered and overcrowded for the sheer amount of people attempting to get across each time. This route in particular has suffered from pushbacks, where typically the naval authority of the country that migrants are attempting to get to, as the name suggests, pushes them back and prevents them from entering sovereign waters. In some instances, these authorities have allegedly conducted illegal pushbacks. The central Mediterranean route is another option. This is yet another extremely well-known route. Migrants fleeing from Tripoli in Libya or Sfax in Tunisia will again, as with the Greek route, try and cross the Mediterranean Sea to reach the likes of Malta or the island of Lampedusa before onward travel to the Italian mainland. At the height of the pandemic, Malta and Italy shut their borders to try and control the spread of infection. Therefore, migrants entering Italian waters were, from April, transferred onto so-called quarantine boats, where they'd be held for 14 days before being transferred again to welcome centres on the mainland. Finally, there's the Channel. For years, the Channel crossing has been a major point of contention and a major crossing point for migrants. In 2020 alone, more than 8,000 people used the route. All in all, leading to Britain and France in late November, signing a new agreement in an effort to make the route unviable. The agreement consists of a number of new measures, including doubling the number of officers patrolling French beaches, as well as the deployment of drones, radar equipment, optromic binoculars and fixed cameras, so probably not the best place to go sunbathing then. 
So those are the four primary routes that migrants are expected to take into the EU in 2021. As we highlighted, Europe is taking certain measures to make these passages harder, but it was ultimately events that occurred on the Greek route that, in the eyes of many, provoked the sharp change in policy from the European Union. In early September, fires ripped through Greece's largest migrant camp, on the Isle of Lesbos. The camp was designed to house under 3,000 people, but following the fire, it left nearly 13,000 people without shelter. Moria quickly became a symbol of Europe's hardline to migrants, and the increasing failures arising from it. Ultimately, the attention this garnered led to the Migration Pact being presented by the European Commission, which would return more failed asylum seekers back to their home countries, and help deal with the internal battles and disputes when it comes to migrant relocation in the European Union. The Vice President of the European Commission, and the person in charge of promoting the European way of life, in presenting the pact cited Moria by name, saying that Moria is a stark reminder that the clock has run out on how long we can live in a house half-built. The pact provides the missing pieces of the puzzle for a comprehensive approach to migration. The EU is unquestionably taking a harder stance against migrants in the last year or so, In March, the Commission President Ursula von der Leyen announced that some 700 million euros was being made available, and that Frontex border presence would be bolstered along the Greek-Turkish border, specifically with seven vessels, two helicopters, one plane, three thermovision vehicles, and a hundred extra border guards, a trend that continued throughout 2020. Frontex increased involvement and alleged complicity with the illegal pushbacks of migrant boats has led to some critics seeing it as the spearhead of a militaristic Fortress Europe strategy. For some context here, in 2005, Frontex's annual budget stood at just 6 million euros. By the end of 2020, that figure's risen to 420 million euros. In spite of the new migration pact, there are a number of outstanding issues that remain. Dealing with the migration crisis is not something that can be dealt with overnight, and with the fallout of the pandemic sapping political energy away from the topic, it's even less possible right now. There's no easy solution either. As of the end of December 2020, the European Court of Justice ruled that Hungary's asylum process breached EU law. The court ruled that the detention of asylum seekers in metal containers in transit zones without food, as well as forbidding them asylum to legally remain in the country while the process was underway, was illegal. Hungary's transit zones aren't the only thing that European member states have tried to use when dealing with migrants. Hungary itself has installed high-tech heat sensors, cameras, automatic recording equipment, and razor wire concertina fencing along its border with both Serbia and Croatia. Greece's border with North Macedonia, Austria's border with Slovenia, and Slovenia's border with Croatia have all had barbed wire fences installed, with the Slovenian-Croatian border getting border guards as well. And the Spanish borders at Sutra and Melilla feature two wire fences, motion detectors, video and infrared cameras, 17 control towers, and a maritime border surveillance system have all been installed. At the beginning of 2020, the Greek government also announced plans to build a floating barrier, an initial 2.7km seawall off the islands of Lesbos that could be extended up to 15km if the initial pilot is successful. It's clear then that Europe's attempting to harden its borders to stop illegal immigration through these paths and others. Ultimately though, the EU's in a difficult position. Balancing the demands of member states while also dealing with asylum seekers and people who genuinely need assistance and protection from war, famine and persecution. But what do you think? Has Europe dealt with the migrant crisis well in past months and years? What can and should be done? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.